A native of Sherbrooke, Quebec, Chief Warrant Officer Frank Dutel enrolled in Royal Canadian Air Forces as an in-craft engine technician in May 1981, following his classical studies at Seminaire saint charles Borromé. In October 1989, CWO Dutel was transferred to CFB St. Hubert, Quebec, into the 1st Regular Force Support Unit. Transferred to the 4th Rig Tactical Helicopter Squadron in 1995, he qualified on the CH-146 Griffin and became an instructor for this aircraft in 1996. In 2000, he joined the position of senior instructor, followed by the position of warrant officer in the standard section. He has held the position of squadron CWO since August 2019. Mr. Ducheneau acts as inspector general of the city of saint jean honorary colonel of the 438 Tactical Helicopter Squadron of the Canadian Armed Forces, a fellow senior executive of the John Molson School of Management at Concordia University and vice president of the Memory Committee, whose objective is to combat violence against women. Over more than 50 years of career, the majority of which are in senior management, he has published several texts and given hundreds of speeches at the local, national and international level related to his area of expertise. Some of his professional experience and studies include Director of Police for the City of Montreal in 1993 and also being former police officer for the City of Montreal in 1968. His study include Corporate Director Development Program in the McGill University of Montreal. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this first episode of the 3K Wildcat. Uh, so this is a project, a pilot project for a podcast for a squadron. Today we have two very uh, important uh, members of our community. Um, uh, I will let you present yourselves. Yeah. I'm uh, Jacques Ducheneau, I'm the Honorary Colonel of uh, 438 Squadron in St. Hubert. Uh, I'm uh, Chief Warrant Officer Frank Util. I'm uh, actually the uh, 438 Squadron uh, Chief Warrant Officer. As you can see, we have very important guests with us today here. Uh, welcome, to, welcome to you and our squadron. So, just so you guys know, we are filming this right before our parade. Uh, so right now, you guys are forming up in our gym. Uh, if you are not home. Uh, so we'll start this. Can you tell me why did you pursue a career in the military in cadets? Because we all know that both of them have had a career in cadets. Actually, being a cadet uh, really led me to who I am today. I uh, come from a very poor background um, and the cadets uh, really helped me uh, get through uh, hell, just put it this way. Because, uh, uh, we, we, you know, family uh, was kind of poor, and we had a very uh, tough uh, neighborhood. And, and being a cadet uh, gave me discipline, uh, attitude, and, and also uh, uh, it gave me ways to achieve my dreams. Uh, that one for me was uh, being uh, a police officer. Uh, actually today, April the 1st, 1968, I became a police officer. Yes. And uh, during training and through my whole career, you know, 30 years, uh, having been a cadet really made a difference. Uh, and that's why I'm so happy to be here. That's why I feel like your story is so interesting because um, growing up in a poor background, I think that's basically because one, one it was free, but also it gave you an opportunity to, to uh, see other things than mm -hmm. just where you came from and mm -hmm. give you opportunities that you wouldn't necessarily have if you didn't have cadets. So I feel like this is something that marks someone as a human being. And uh, I feel that has a lot to do with why you pursued a career in, uh, as a policeman. My so first nice. new pair of shoes were cadet boots. Really? New ones. I used to wear my brother's uh, shoes. They were hand me down. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, well, that's fine. It says a lot. Yeah. How was you uh, chewing? Me, as, uh, since the first time I looked up and I saw an airplane go by, I knew I'd spend my life near airplanes. Mm -hmm. And I was at an air show in my hometown of Sherbrooke, 
uh, must have been like nine or ten. I was with my grandfather, my cousin, and a flight of air cadets marched by, very sharp drill, and I said, "That's for me." And the, the very next year, I uh, was enrolled in air cadets. Uh, as soon as uh, my time was up, the jig was up. Uh, high school was over. 18 years of age. Yep. It was uh, the RCAF. I never even considered doing anything else but joining the Air Force after cadets. So that was clear for you? Oh, it was, the first time I saw playing nobody was clear. Even though it's not mandatory for cadets to do it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You, it it something that made no to... difference whatsoever. If cadets hadn't been there, I still would have joined the Air Force. Mm -hmm. But as the Colonel said, cadets, uh, cadets were turned out to be much, much more than I ever thought it was. When mm -hmm. I, all, all I saw was the cool uniforms, the way they were marching, it looked pretty sharp, it looked good. You know, stepping stone towards uh, the Air Force, but it, it, it got to be so much more. It, 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 it took a young, skinny, shy kid and it turned me, I was a uh, chief warrant officer of my uh, squadron at the end and I had 267 cadets on parade. Wow. Yeah. It, 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 it turns a young man into a young adult, yeah. I tell you. Yeah. I have to ask you a question, something that I've heard before. When you do seven years as a cadet, Right, and you age out at 19. If you join the army, it says that you have six months in advance. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Co co compared to the others, so you're. You don't need to do seven years. You have to do five. I think they even brought it down to four. Okay. But uh, yeah, you will get a uh, your pay incentives. They're advanced by six months, and it, but if you uh, you get into a technical trade. That's only good until you hit corporal and you okay. get your spec pay after that, uh, the six months is gone. But in the meantime, it's thousands of dollars more. It's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So, um, you were cadets before, a lot of our listeners are cadets. What advice would you give to a young cadet who is listening to us right now uh, from what you've seen in uh, both of your lives? Get involved. Uh, you know, you don't wait for people to ask you to do something, you know, just be one step ahead and it, it makes a difference. And, and uh, you know, friendship, uh, still to this day, I, I have friends who were cadets with me. Mm. Uh, you know, the band uh, really made a difference for me because I could have gone uh, either way, you know, yeah. a, a good boy <laughs> becoming a police officer yes. or my neighbors, some uh, became uh, criminals and, and were in prison, and, and I was the lucky guy because uh, uh, because of the discipline and, and uh, what I was looking for, you know, uh, uh, in the cadets. I mean, never travel outside of the province of Quebec. Uh, I went to uh, Camp Borden for a leadership course. Uh, first time I was out of the province. The year after that, I was in an exchange program. Mm -hmm went to um, England and uh, Scotland and Ireland, uh, first time out of the country. Uh, and I remember marching uh, the, um, the squadron uh, to Buckingham Palace. I was a unilingual francophone, couldn't speak, when I went to Borden, couldn't speak a word uh, of English. And I was just, you know, I wanted to have something to eat, I had to point out what I wanted. Uh, and so I learned, you know, through the six weeks we, we were in Camp Borden. So it gave me all the tools to become uh, who I am today or what I've, you know, been doing. Uh, you said you did group. SLC. Yeah. yeah. It was in English. Yeah. 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 When I did my SLC, I had never done drill in English at all. My squadron was Francophone. From the nanosecond we stepped off the Boeing and Cold Lake, and were marched to the barracks, 1,200 feet away. I knew every single command in English. <laughs> <laughs> Those drills, they, they were drills, corporal, oh, yeah, mass yeah, corporal, oh, yeah. and they scared years off of our lives. Yeah, really. it was, oh yeah, it was, it was just like, yeah. Joining the Marines, what you see on TV, um, the, on the SLC was, was like that in those days. The drill surgeons on YouTube, oh, that was, they, well, they scream at you. It was like that on the SLC way back. Way back. You got a welcome that would put the fear of God into you like yeah. you wouldn't believe. SLC, for those who don't know, is uh, the leadership course. So that's where you learn how to uh, march and also uh, your leadership skills that you can have. Senior yeah. leader course. Yeah, yeah. yeah there was a three-week JLC in Baggettville, and there was a six-week uh, SLC. And 
used to be only in Cold Lake, and now I think they give it a three places. Yeah, I think they give it a Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned you were a police officer. Yep. And you are the chief warrant officer of the Fleet Three Eight. What? The best. <laughs> the best chief warrant officer in the of, RCA. Of the... I, I'm, I'm the best at my squadron. <laughs> <laughs> <you that much. laughs> uh, so, what does a day in your life look like? For for someone who doesn't know you, uh, what do you do as soon as you wake up? I wish I could stay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I turn over and I see if I maybe it's no. Saturday. <laughs> Today it's different, but, but back in the days, uh, you know, being a police officer, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I had all sorts uh, of experiences when I was a police officer because of the training I received as a cadet. Uh, and uh, like I said, you could see actually when I graduated, I was the commanding officer of the uh, troop because. I was trained uh, you know, as a cadet and, and actually I became a cadet because I wanted to know how to march, you know, doing drill uh, and courses, you know, uh, first aid courses. All this helped me. Uh, so when I joined the police force, I already had training uh, that uh, was given by the cadets. You were ready for it. I was ready for it, looking forward to it. You sir? Normal day at the squadron. I'm the chief warrant officer and the Air Force, that pretty means my main task is the welfare of all the non-officer personnel of the squadron, which is 85% of the unit, a couple of hundred. Uh, I try to make sure that when I pass the threshold of the hangar that I'm smiling and that I'm relaxed. Uh, if they see me stressed out, I stress out everybody. So. I try to be uh, nice to everybody, big smile, morning, how you doing, how's the wife, how are the kids, is the dog back from the vet, everybody okay? Then I desperately seek the coffee pot, <laughs> which uh, saves my life every morning. And I'll be honest with you, except for the odd meeting, most of my day, unfortunately, is spent behind a desk doing paperwork, preparing career courses for my 150 NCOs. Uh, preparing uh, reports, preparing uh, recommendations for awards, for medals, uh, looking over files of new personnel posted in, for personnel posted out. And because I've got an open door policy and I'm like everybody's old nice uncle, uh, well, there's somebody at my door just about every four or five minutes with a personal problem that needs fixing. So I. I'm supposed to be out of the hangar at about four or daily. I rarely out of there before 5.30, but I love the job. Uh, most military at 25 years of service, you're pensioned off, you can leave. I'm, I'm in my 42nd year of service right now. And uh, I do it because the people I work with are second to none. Exactly like the cadet movement, the, the previous question you had, what would I say to a young cadet? Mm -hmm. Stay in cadet. Mm -hmm. Do the four years, the five years, the six years, it'll pay off. You look anywhere in Canadian society, coast to coast, in schoolyards and parks, there's an emergency. Everybody's freaking out. People are taking out their cell phones. Who's helping? Who's calling the ambulance? Who's doing CPR? Who's taking charge? Who's doing traffic duty? It's the cadet. The, 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 the values that are instilled, even at their behest sometimes, through the movement is second to none. That's why even after I left cadets and I joined the Air Force, I gave my time to the cadet squadron in Chatham, New Brunswick when I was there. There's four cadet courses in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. I worked with all four cadet courses for five straight years. I didn't have a life. Uh, when I got back here, I used to drive to Sherbrooke every Friday night to the squadron and every Thursday I was with 585 in Beaconsville. I did that for 34 years because it's worth it, because it's the best youth movement in the world, bar none. And you are living proof right there. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Well, that is very inspiring. Thank you, sir. Uh, I feel like uh, in your squad, in your squad, you may be the glue to the, uh, the non, non <laughs> the glue that keeps the non-commissioned officers well together. I'll, I'll be honest with you. The the and, and the colonel has seen that himself. He was with the squadron years ago. He, mm -hmm. he, He's an ex wildcat. Well, you're never an ex wildcat. You're always a wildcat. Yes. And 
We've been asked by other units, how can 438 retain such an incredible esprit de corps? We don't have a magic answer. We are just fair, decent, and we treat people well. And it, when they need us, we're there for them. And it's always paid back two, three, and fourfold. So it, it, it's a family atmosphere. Absolutely. Did he mention that he was passionate? <laughs> he, he forgot to say that. But, uh, yeah. Well, it's a spirit. Thank you very much, uh, both of you, for being here. I have one last question for you uh, before we end this. Uh, it's a special question. Uh, I was wondering, do you prefer pizza with or without pineapple? That's blasphemy. You <laughs> don't put pineapple on pizza. Cut. <laughs> I'll let you know your answer. I don't have an answer. I just follow what he said. <laughs> pineapple on pizza. I find it delicious. Uh, it's no. illegal in some countries. Uh, <laughs> have you tried burgers with pineapple? Nope. A Hawaiian burger. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I'll try it out. Yeah, it's try it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much for being here and thank you for all the nurses if you've made it to the end of the video. Um, have a great day. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe so we can do more episodes of these. Thank you.